Good day, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we are once again together. So we're looking at question two from the DBE 2021 paper, uh, the uh, the June exam. All right, and um, yeah. So if you haven't subscribed, please just be part of the family, okay? And uh, yeah, for those of you who need assistance, uh, you know our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. Right, let's quickly get into this question and see what it has in store for us. Uh, by the way, uh, you can actually download this paper from the DBE uh, website. Okay, so um, it's it can be found there. Right, they say the letters A to F in the table below represents six organic compounds. Okay, so we've got methanoic acid there, pentanal, uh, we've got, uh, it looks like butane, C10H22, that's definitely an alkane. Okay, and we've got that monstrosity of a structure there. Uh, and in this case, we've got E, which looks like an alcohol. And F, which is a uh, which is a ketone. Okay, right. So they say to us, write down the letters that represent uh, the following. Okay, so please note when they say write down the letters, uh, that's what they expect of you. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to start with 2.1. Okay, uh, so for 2.1, um, uh, which one is a ketone? Uh, definitely that would be F. Okay, and for 2. Point, oh, so that's 2.1.1, 2.1.2. They say two compounds that are functional isomers. Um, so remember, we've got two sets of functional isomers. That's carboxylic acids uh, are functional isomers of esters. Okay, and um, uh, ketones and uh, aldehydes are functional isomers of each other, right? So if I look at that, uh, I see, sorry about that. Uh, so I've got B, which is pentanal, and I've got F, uh, which is also uh, a ketone. So this is an aldehyde, and this is a ketone with five carbons. That's also got five carbons. So in this case, it's B and F. Okay, right. And then the next one, 2.1.3, they say a hydrocarbon. Okay, so which one would be a hydrocarbon? It means that it only has to have hydrogen and carbons. Uh, so definitely that would be compound C. Um, so in that case, uh, for 2.1.3, that would be C. Okay, and for the next one, 2.2, okay, they say for compound D, write down the homologous series to which it belongs. Now remember compound D, if I look at it there, I've got those bromines there. So in that case, uh, for 2.2.1, uh, that belongs to uh, haloalkanes, right? So that's haloalkanes. Uh, remember, uh, you can also call them alkyl halides, okay? But uh, yeah, um, haloalkanes should, should do. All right, um, the next one, they say the IUPAC name, okay? So in this case, we're looking for the IUPAC name of compound D. So what I'm going to do is, let's try and count to C. Um, so that's going to be, all right, so from this side, it's carbon number one, two, three. We've got a bromide carbon number three, four, five, six, seven. Now, please note, when they give you a bracket, the bracket actually shows you two things. One, it could either be a uh, repetition or it could be a, um, you know, a side chain. All right. In this case, how do you know when it's a repetition? When you've got a number outside that bracket. So like in this case, uh, I can see I've got a number here outside. So it's telling me that CH2 is repeated. So when I count there, it's going to be one, two, three four, five, six, seven, and eight. So when I look at this from the left, uh, my first bromine is at, uh, uh, is at carbon number four, and from the right, it's actually at carbon number three. So I'm going to actually number uh, from the right to the left. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? 
Okay, so in this case, I've got um, at carbon number three and carbon number five, I've got a bromine there. So this is two comma, uh, sorry, three comma five dibromo. Okay, so remember I've got two of those bromines, so you definitely need to say di. Okay, so that's 3,5 dibromo. And in this case, I've got uh, eight carbon uh, carbons in my parent chain. There's no side chains in this case. Uh, so that's going to be uh, pentane, I mean octane. Let's see, is there no double bond? No, uh, so that's going to be octane. Okay, so that's 3,5 dibromo octane. Um, and please just remember that, uh, you know, uh, when, when you look at, uh, you know, the length of the chain, uh, remember because we are talking about chain, uh, uh, in, uh, chains in this case, it means you can bend it in any way. So uh, just be careful, uh, um, you know, not to think, uh, particularly when you look at this one, you know, you think that it was a, a, a side chain or in this case a, a, a branch. Okay, so uh, in that case that forms part of our parent chain. Okay, so it means that they've uh, it's been bent. Okay, right. Uh, moving to the next one, they say consider the compound F. Okay, they say write down the IUPAC name, uh, name of its positional isomer. Now I want you to note the moment that we take the double bond O and we put it at the last carbon, okay, this one here, uh, in that case it doesn't become a positional isomer anymore because it then becomes uh, an aldehyde, okay, uh, it's no longer a ketone, uh, so it would be now a functional isomer, it actually uh, would be pentanal. But the only way where I can take that uh, um, double bond O is actually in the carbon and uh, next to it here, uh, which is at carbon number three, right? Uh, in that case, it still becomes a a a a, um, a ketone, right? So in this case, we've got at 2.3.1, right? Uh, they say the positional isomer of it, okay? That would be uh, pentan. Uh, so that would be pentan 3 own. So if I put that at carbon number uh, 3, all right, it would still be a, a, a ketone and it would be now pentan 3 own. At the moment, it was pentan 2 own, or you can say 3 pentanone. Okay, all right. Um, so 2.3.2. Uh, they say, well, uh, a chain isomer, right? So in this case, when we look at the chain isomer, remember they say they, they said write down the IUPAC name of the uh, chain isomer of it. So that means that we now need to make a chain isomer of this guy. Uh, let's see. So if we placed our... Um, yeah, so if uh, if we had a uh, two methyl, okay, two methyl, uh, so we would need to put the methyl at carbon number two, okay, um, so it would be two methyl, uh, no, actually three methyl, okay, so it would be three methyl. I can only put that uh, methyl at carbon number three, okay. Uh, then it would be butane 2 own. Remember, I'd need to put the, 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 the functional group still. I'd need to keep it at the same carbon. Okay, so the only way where I can do that, so this would be carbon number 1, carbon number 2. At carbon number 3, that's where I would put the, um, you know, the, the, the methyl group or in this case the alkyl group in this case so uh, but otherwise if you had to put it at carbon number two it would still be a uh, pentan right because it just means it would be a bent chain okay so the only way that you could do that is if you put it at uh, carbon number three all right so uh, the next question says uh, during the last reaction of compound a with compound E in the presence of an acid catalyst, 
uh, two products are formed. Now, please note, when I take compound A, with his, which is methanoic acid, and uh, they said compound E, which is an alcohol. By the way, that's not a side chain either. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this would be uh, hexen uh, one all, right? Or one hexanol, all right? Uh, in this case, uh, they, they, they want to find out for the organic uh, product formed, write down the IUPAC name. Now, please note, when we write down the IUPAC name for esters, okay? Uh, um, remember that you always start with the alcohol side, okay? Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go and watch our, uh, you know, our full-length videos on, you know, uh, organic chemistry. Okay, we've got an entire playlist on naming and uh, um, the reactions of organic compounds. All right, so now they say to us um, the IUPAC name. So I name the alcohol first, but remember I end up with aisle, right? So in this case, it's hexanol. Um, so this would be uh, hexyl, uh, hexyl, all right? So that would be hexyl. Um, and remember our carboxylic acid is methanoic acid. So this would be hexyl methanoate. Okay, remember the um, the suffix for, est uh, for esters is that suffix O8 there. So this would be hexyl methanoate. Okay, H hopefully that makes sense. Right, uh, next one. They say... Um, Write down the structural formula, okay, of its functional group. All right, so keep in mind for esters, uh, the functional group uh, of esters, you'd see it with that O that's in line with your carbons there. And you also have a double bond O over there. Uh, you can put an R there. You can put an R dash over there. Okay, so um, the functional group of esters is actually this entire thing over here. Okay, you can write it as I did there, or you can write it without the R and R dash. Okay, uh, in this case, um, if you draw it within a compound, please just remember to always circle it. Okay, uh, and that would be the functional group of an ester. Right, as we go to the next question. Okay, so 2.5, they say compound C, uh, which is C10H22, that's butane, uh, reacts at high temperature and pressure to form three uh, carbon alkenes. Okay, so that would be three carbon alkene, which is P, all right, um, and an alkane, which is Q. All right, uh, so in this case, which means they are telling us that if we take C10H22, uh, okay, what it will do is that it will uh, form a three carbon alkene and an alkane. So obviously our three carbon alkene should be C3H6, right? And whatever is left uh, should actually form Q. So how would we do that? We'd say, okay, um, we've, we had 10 carbons. We used three here. So it means that how many are we left with? Uh, so it means that I've got seven that are left. And then I had 22 uh, hydrogens. Uh, if I use six, okay. So in that case, I would have uh, 16 uh, that are left, so it would be C7H16, uh, right? Uh, they say, uh, write down the type of reaction that takes place. So uh, remember, this is what we call uh, cracking, all right? So the breaking down of compounds, in this case, uh, of large organic compounds uh, to form more uh, smaller, more usable ones. Uh, so this would be cracking. 
Okay, so uh, uh, just uh, by the way, uh, remember there are two types of cracking. We've got what we call catalytic cracking, which happens at lower temperature. Uh, but in this case, they did say higher high temperature. So uh, that would this is what we call thermal cracking. All right. Now they say write down the molecular formula of compound Q. All right. Uh, so remember that compound Q uh, in that case. Okay, I'm just going to try and squeeze it over here. Uh, so, uh, so that's 2.5.2. Uh, okay, remember that uh, 2.5.1, we said the answer is thermal cracking. Né? Okay, so uh, for Q, 2.5.2, uh, Q uh, is this guy over here. Okay, uh, but then they said the molecular formula. Uh, so we just need to draw out the structure of it. Oh no, they did say molecular formula. Sorry, uh, why am I drawing the structure? So this would be C7H16. Uh, H Sorry about that. C7H16. Okay, so that would be our answer. And then the last one, they say the structural formula uh, of compound P. Okay, uh, so compound P. All right, if you don't mind, I'm just going to draw it over there, 2.5.3. Okay, so remember we are talking three carbons there. So uh, where we've got a double bond in one. Okay, so it would look like that. Uh, just remember that the number of bonds around each carbon should actually be four. Okay. So there would be our structure. Okay, this is a hydrogen, sorry. All right, and that is essentially, we would have gotten ourselves all those 19 marks. Okay, and I hope that you can follow on. Uh, you could follow on in what uh, I was doing. All right, so we'll see each other again when we look at question three. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, hopefully you continue working hard towards achieving that A. Yeah, I hope you will. Eh? Right. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.